What's up, YouTube? Dad here from Zephyr Games, bringing you a 60 card Light Swan deck profile. Now, obviously, Light Swans have the massive ability to abuse the graveyard, um, and six is one of the very first 60 card decks that you can kind of abuse in the sense of in this current meta, um, which is why you mix it with a small zombie engine as well. So, what we're going to do to save any further ado is I will put these back where they belong and then we'll crack on with the deck profile. Um, so, obviously, it is 60 cards. So we will be taking it from the top to the bottom uh, and kind of going through there. Uh, there's a couple of tech cards I'm trialing out instead of other alternatives that some people play. Uh, when I get to those cards, I will explain why I've chosen to use those over others. So without further ado, we'll start it off with double JD. There's a couple of reasons I'm only playing two JDs and most of it is because I've only got two ulties. Um, no, no. So in this build, because we rely a lot on the... It's a, it's a really, really strong uh, special summon monster. Um, but because we rely on the zombies as well as, and we kind of use our extra deck quite a bit, um, you never really want to use his effect to nuke the board unless you're in huge trouble or you think you can go for game. Now, in the Black Luster Soldier variant, uh, Envoy variant, um, you play a lot more dark monsters, and that is where J JD would probably play it free because he just provides so much more for the deck. Uh, I play Monster Reincarnation, so I can revive him if he's banished. Uh, sorry, not banished, sent to graveyard. But obviously in the Black Luster uh, Soldier Envoy um, deck profile, you would then go with JDs, nuke the board, bring out a BLS, bring out a snow, kind of go for game. But at two, he's more than enough in this deck. Triple Lumina, uh, this is where you would probably take one out for a dark if you wanted to go for the BLS route, um, but Lumina is just so important in this uh, deck that the fact that he's just pitch and revive <clears throat> and circle around is really, really important. Triple Raiden, again, another one of the monsters you'd probably take out for a dark monster if you did want to play the BLS version. Um, but again, he is one of the most important Light Swarm monsters around. Triple Wolf, um, Light Swarm Beast, again, you never really want to open him up, but 9 out of 10, you probably will. Uh, it's just incredibly powerful. A 21 beta that you just revive back from the graveyard, and it's so easy to send to grave as well. It kind of works massively. Uh, same with Double Felice. Again, you very rarely want to open up with her, um, which is why you play it too, because in a 60 card deck, you're less likely to see her. Um, plus, her secondary effect is really, really important. The fact you contribute this card, then target a monster your opponent tries and destroy it is very, very important, and some people forget about that. And then we finish it off with the one Lila Light Swan. Bit of a back row bait and drag out, um, plus obviously an additional name for JD. Then the zombie engine, we've got double uni zombie. Uh, again, really, really important in the zombie deck. You don't want it at free at this moment in time. You can try it at free. Um, I would probably put it at free if you're going to go with a BLS version because it's another dark name to have in grave. Uh, the one you want at free is triple Shirinui Solitaire and a triple Mizuki because obviously Solitaire is at one card level 8 synchro or rank 4 play. Uh, we then go with triple Fairy Tail Snow. This is like the MVP in this type of deck. Because you fill your graveyard up so quickly with the amount of mills you do with both the Light Swans, Zombies, and of course the mill cards like Grass, Snow is incredibly powerful. Not only can it disrupt your opponent and stop them winning the game, it can stall you out a little bit longer. And it just disrupts your opponent so much more um, and causes them so much more of a headache. We then play the Predator Plant engine, which is triple Lone Fire Blossom, triple Predator Plant, Scorpio, and the single... Dolin Cobra, now uh, Cobra, sorry, you will probably open up this guy. You know you do. It's, it's just the same when you would open up Tarkenton Borg in the Terra Top engine. This is kind of what you get, end up getting. Let me play quite a few one offs. So we've got the one Goblinberg, the one Garnet, the one Azulene. Obviously, these are your um, Gem Knight Fusion kind of plays. Uh, brilliant fusion play, sorry, and of course Lazuli is just there for those odd chances that you can revive a recycle Garnet. Now this can be a second Garnet if you want. Um, the reason we play two is because we mill a lot, we don't want to be losing our targets for brilliant fusion. Uh, the one Eclipse Wyvern again can kind of extend your plays and gives you that guaranteed JD to hand. Uh, Shirinui Spectr uh, Spirit Master. This is really really good with Snow because not only can Snow then book a Moon one of your cards if it banishes this as well, it then pops it, and then of course if you banish a Solitaire as well, Solitaire can then revive it as well. Uh, we then obviously have the one Minerva Light Swan Maiden. Again, can really help for that additional one card mill. That one card mill could win you that game. Uh, and then, of course, helps you out with your JDs. Then we play the one Trick Clown. Again, another part of the Brilliant Fusion play. The one Heroic Challenger. Again, you get this guy to Graveyard. He's not only part of your Xabra, uh, MX Xabra Invoker plays to get you into a Mrs. Radiant, but he also helps out massively getting into any other rank fours you need, especially comboing off really well with Trick Clown. The one Electromagnetic Turtle, because I still think it's really, really cool and uh, relevant. You can send it with Brilliant Fusion if you feel you're ever going to be in trouble. Send it with Foolish Burial, get it to Graveyard, and his Banish Effect, with the fact that it just ends the battle phase, is really, really important because it stops your opponent having a battle phase that turn. 
Uh, and then obviously the one maxi, because if you open up with it, happy blooming days. Uh, now you could play, as you can see, there's a quite a hefty monster lineup, and um, because I play Monster Reincarnation, you could also put in hand traps like Ash Blossom and stuff like that, because you can recycle them around. Um, I'll show you when I get to the traps, the reason I'm not playing ha um, any hand traps in this, but you'd side them more. Anyway, triple charge of light braid, absolutely amazing at free, um, incredibly important. Triple solar recharge, again, just as important. Triple Brilliant Fusion, again, really, really strong. And then we've got the one rotor. Ideally, you're going for your Goblin Burke and extend your plays. But then you can also go for your Raiden as well. The one Soul Charge, the one Foolish Burial, the one That Grass Looks Greener, the one Monster Reincarnation, and the one Raigeki. Obviously, we do play quite a lot of one-off spells, uh, which is the gamble for the milling deck of the, the way the deck rolls. You could play left arm offering, but what someone once said to me was, if you get ashed on the left arm offering, you've pretty much lost the game. So it's worth the game. Sometimes it can be worth the gamble. Sometimes it can't. Um, so in this build, I'm trialing it out without left arm offering and seeing how it goes. Um, but it's entirely up to you. The deck is open for interpretation and change. If you wanted to put left arm offerings in, you could easily swap it out for these guys here. So I'm playing triple evenly matched. The reason I'm playing triple evenly matched is because Light Swans can build a board whether they go first or second. The best thing about evenly matched in the sense is that the only thing that I know for sure if I like whether I win the dice roll or lose the dice roll is nine times out of ten, I have the power to go second. If I win the dice roll, I'm going to be choosing to go first. If I lose a dice roll, my opponent's going to be choosing for me to go second. So it gives the power back to me um, in the sense that, you know, if I've opened up an evenly match and I go second, happy days. You, you know, you've pretty much kind of, you would like to think you've won game there, depending on how far extended your opponent goes. Um, now, like I said, this is just a trial at the moment. These can easily be taken out for, of course, like Ash Blossoms or any other hand traps like Ghost Ogres, Ghost Reapers, um, or even Left Arm Offerings, entirely up to you on how you would like to play it. I just feel Evenly Match gives you that opportunity that if you do lose the dice roll, so you kind of take the chance out of it, if you lose the dice roll, you've still got the power of changing the game, rather than your opponent setting up an indestructible board, and you're like, yeah, I can't break it. Evenly Match gives you that opportunity. It also gives you that opportunity that if you set up a board and say, come and break my board, and your opponent does break your board, Evening match can then get you back on um, solid terms with your opponent by balancing in the game back out. So that's it for the main deck. Now on to the extra deck. We'll start off with our XYZs and we've got double Minerva, the Exalted Light Swarm. Uh, now I'm, I'm in an R in about having this at 2. I really want it at 2 because I think it's, it's kind of like the first rank 4 you'll go for. Um, but in testing I really want to put Mrs. Raiden up to 2 as well. So when we get to that I'll explain why. Definitely play the number one, uh, 41 Bakzuka, purely because if you do open up with like a dead hand, as long as you can make a rank 4 play, Bakzuka can be the one card that you can sit on, do your damage with, store your opponent out, and then the fact that it's Earth as well, he can contribute towards Missius Raiden. Uh, the one Tornado Dragon, because this can be very, very important both during your turn and your opponent's turn and can cause a lot of issues. Uh, and then the one MX Zebra Invoker. Now, some other people play like Dante and stuff like that, but I think MX Zebra Invoker is really, really important in the sense that Again, he's Earth, he contributes towards Mistress Radiant. Um, it can be made with two Luminas, it can be made with the uh, Predator Plant engine. And obviously, if you open up the Predator Plant engine with Thousand Blades still in deck, it brings Thousand Blades out. You then link up into Missius Radiant. You've then got the Brilliant Fusion play, so you're going to guarantee a rank 4 coming back out um, because you'll get Trick Clown and then you'll get Thousand Blades. So he can actually help your combos out massively. On to the Synchros. Double Cyphering Lord Omega, both Zombie Deck and Light Swarm Deck can abuse this card like No Tomorrow, um, and it's incredibly powerful because it can loophole around the Link mechanic, uh, and because of the reprint, it's a lot easier for most people to get as well. The one builds of Diabolical Dragon, because you're a, like 9 times out of 10, opponents can struggle to get past builds unless they've got a Kaiju. Now, obviously, going second, your opponent's probably going to be putting Kaijus in, so you will go into builds less and less. Um, but in the sense of builds, it's still an imp incredibly powerful card to play in this deck. The one Michael, quite straightforward in the Light Swarm, and the one Rose for those odd chances that you need to nuke the board to kind of help you get back on level terms or win you the game. Then for our Lim Monsters, we've got the one Firewall, the one Deco Talker, the one Missius Radiant, and the one Proxy Dragon. Now, free testing, I am really, really tempted to try and find a way of bumping Missius Radiant up. Whether that's losing a Minerva, losing Rose, or even Bills, it's, I still think it's incredibly strong and powerful in this deck. Um, for the pure fact that it's one of your easier ones to go into, like, if you go into that, you can then go into Proxy, and then you can kind of extend your plays that way as well. Um, it gives you the ability to... Um, you know, adapt to the deck. 
Firewall, you very rarely go into, so it, Firewall could also be one that could get dropped. Um, decode is just that one to kind of clear up some spaces and extend to um, a link free and push it that way. And then, of course, we finish off with the Gem Knight Seraphonite. Again, being Earth can help you go into Mrs. Radiant. Uh, also, with Uni Zombie, it can help you extend into your level 8 plays. This is kind of where the extra deck has the room for adaption, um, in the pure sense that because you're running both Zombies and, of course, Light Swarms, um, both of them abuse different styles in the sense that some of them have overlap cards like Omega, Seraphonite, and stuff like that. But then, obviously, they all have their own individual cards that they can make, such as Bills, uh, and then, of course, Minerva, which can be made in Zombies as well, but, you know, it gives you more plus. So it's entirely up to you. The deck is open um, and more than capable of being adapted. Um, but what we do is we just bring you the skeletons. We put on the muscles that we're, the muscles and kind of the tendons and stuff like that. We build the skeleton from scratch for you guys. Um, sh these have been through testing. It's kind of proven to be how good it's done for me uh, in that kind of sense. Uh, and then we're still tweaking and twerking around with it. So if there are any suggestions, please let us know. Anyway, thanks for watching. And as I've been doing all week, I am going to warm you guys up. So we just got back from YCS London, where, of course, Eric Stewart Kyber, you can see signed it right there, and Dan Yugi Green. Let's see if we can bring it in here. There you go. Dan Yugi Green signed this awesome con exclusive playmat for us, and we'll be giving one of these away. So we've got this to give away to one lucky viewer, one lucky winner, one lucky Yugi player. Um, and I will be putting up the details for that very, very shortly. So, like I've said, keep an eye on our Facebook page. Like that page if you haven't done so already, because that will be the first place you'll find out when that competition goes live. Or if you subscribe to the YouTube channel again, get your notifications going so you don't miss out on that giveaway, because that is an awesome, awesome giveaway. I've seen people putting them up online for stupid prices. So if you want it just for the money, by all means, enter. If you want it because you want to play on it, you don't have a mat, or you didn't get a chance to get down to Comic-Con to meet the guys themselves, that is one for you. And we here at Zephyr War Games will be giving it away for one of you guys. Whether you're in America, whether you're across the ocean, in a different part of the country, or, of course, anywhere around the world, we will get that out to you guys if you're one of the lucky winners. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share. Keep up to date with everything we're doing to keep an eye on that giveaway, keep an eye on our deck profiles, all jewels. And if there are any deck suggestions that you would like us to build, please put them in the comments below. We will get to them as soon as we possibly can. It is crazy the amount of releases. We've got Spirit Warriors coming out in about two weeks' time, which is going to have Magical Musketeers, Weveries, and Six Samurais. So... Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, and until next time, guys, as always, happy dawling. If you like that video, why not check out our other videos available? We've got more deck profiles, pack openings, and of course, duels. And don't forget to click on the most important button of all, that subscribe button, right in the bottom left-hand corner.